less planning ahead and less certainty, often lived with a lot of uncertainty in Brazil. Whilst on the plus side, what that meant was uh, the team I worked in within Rio was extremely adaptable and flexible to any last minute changes. The key thing that I'll come back to, I think, is this planning versus adaptability. Then there are elements such as timekeeping, um, worrying. I think in the UK, I would say we're a nation of warriors. We always worry about what could go wrong and, and um, constantly fret about having perfection. What I found in Brazil is people really don't worry so much. They are very adaptable and flexible to changes at the last minute because often there are. My name is Marcelle Bottini and welcome to How to Do Business in Brazil podcast. We'll be sharing stories and successful experience from CEOs, directors, diplomats and workers in Brazil. We will discover their tips and strategies so that you and your venture can be successful too. Why did you choose Brazil? Well, I first came to Brazil as a backpacker when I was 22 years old and fell in love with the city of Rio and it, its beauty, its natural beauty. Uh, and then I started working for the Olympic Games in my home country of Great Britain, in, in London. And I worked for the British Olympic Association for Team GB for, for seven years. And the Olympic Games in 2012 were in London. The next edition of the Olympic Games were in Rio de Janeiro in 2016. So it was destiny that I was going to put together my passion for working with the Olympics together with the passion I felt for Brazilian life and, and the city of Rio. It's great. So what, which project were you involved in? So the Olympic Games, um, every edition of the Olympic Games has a host organizing committee which in Rio was called Rio 2016. And this is formed of Brazil, it's Brazilian owned company. Uh, it's formed seven years before the Olympics begin and it is responsible for organizing the games. So every aspect of the, the games themselves, the sporting element, the hosting, the athletes, um, and that runs through seven, a seven year project until the end of the games when the, the organization is, is closed down. Great. So what the, were your goals before coming to Brazil and the, have you achieved that goals? So it was a real big life moment for me. It was the first time I came to live outside of my home country, England. Um, it was a new language. It was a new culture. It was a new climate, very different climate from London. And so there were many life goals in terms of having a new life experience and uh, growing and learning a new language. Um, so I would say I, I um, achieved the objectives that I set out to, to have a, a, one, a, a really amazing new life experience. And then on the working side, it was a very um, big project and I had a, a fairly high profile role because of dealing with international media. So every few days there would be a big story concerning the Olympic games in the buildup. Um, so it was a really exciting work opportunity too. And so to match those two things, a life experience and a work experience together was, was a great, a great four-year project. Great. Andy, what did you find was most difficult uh, working with Brazilians or working in Brazil? Well, the first and most obvious thing, I guess, is the language. It's, it's so vital to have Uh, to work on your Portuguese and to have enough to, to um, first of all, show that you're making an effort and then after a year or so to be able to com confidently communicate. Um, that's how long it took me. I was doing lessons um, once or twice a week at lunchtimes uh, within my workplace. And it's so worthwhile because really to, to get by in Brazil and to really in immerse yourself in, in Brazilian life and to enjoy all the elements of it, it's, it's vital to, to get those language skills. So that was the first barrier to overcome. Other huge differences between working in London and working in Brazil were, were, were almost every aspect of, of working <laughs> life. So 
the culture of of, um, of communication. Uh, it's very informal in Brazil. It's quite formal in London. Um, everybody in the morning greets each other. There's handshakes, there's hugs, there's kisses. There's a lot of informality. And I really enjoyed that. I'm quite a tactile person anyway for, for a British, British guy. And um, I really enjoyed the warm embrace that you get in Brazil inside the workplace as well as outside of it. Then there are elements such as timekeeping. I found myself being a, a very sort of strict and what they call chateau. I think I mean boring gringo in the first six months because I was rigid and inflexible and I, I expected everything to happen at the time it was promised to happen. And in fact, in, in Rio in particular, um, there is a very flexible approach to timing. And rather than fight against that, what I found the only way to really operate was to, to um, go with the flow more. And I think my final comment probably is about um, worrying. I think in the UK, I would say we're a nation of warriors. We always worry about what could go wrong and, and um, constantly fret about having perfection. What I found in Brazil is people really don't worry so much. They are very adaptable and flexible to changes at the last minute because often there are, whilst in the UK things are much more mapped and planned. So I'd say it's both a strength and a weakness because what I found in Brazil was there was less planning ahead and less certainty, often lived with a lot of uncertainty in Brazil. Whilst on the plus side, what that meant was uh, the team I worked in within Rio was extremely adaptable and flexible to any last minute changes. Yeah, I, I really think you learn it a lot there because when I met you in 2014, I think, uh, mm -hmm. for me, you were just flexible and nice. You always have this smile on your face, you know, even in the work like you were very mm -hmm. serious and like you were very like everybody you were no everybody knows knows you in your work for you being professional you you were always in contact with everybody but you always have this smile on your face and you always like you were enjoying the life there yeah I, I try to be professional with a smile but um that's something that's natural to me but i think it also fits very well with carioca lifestyle with um rio lifestyle people do enjoy life and i think the priorities that people have in life in rio are probably different from the uk i think the first priority is really family family and and, and friends the second priority is enjoy your life and the third priority quite significantly lower is work, career success, status, importance. I feel like I feel like in the UK, sometimes work can come above family, friends, health, um, life enjoyment. So it's interesting, um, the difference. Certainly, uh, I think there is a difference in productivity as well and, and uh, um, and perhaps the, the, the sense of less worry and more enjoying life that I found in Rio is, is a good life lesson, actually, for perhaps those of us that come from more high stress or fast dynamic cultures such as the UK workplace. Yeah, of course, like it, uh, productivity is very important, but the, mm -hmm. uh, more and more we've been realizing that the, the life is about living the life. Yeah, and of course in Rio you have you're blessed with incredible weather the whole year round. Um, so every you know 300 out of 365 days a year, you probably when you're leaving the office, there's probably a blue sky with sunshine. That makes a complete difference in your eagerness to get your work done, to to to, to leave the office on time and to enjoy your evening, perhaps see sunset on the beach. Um, also, there's all the natural beauty of Rio, the mountains, the hiking, the surfing, the ocean. And I found in London sometimes um, there, was, there was less uh, uh, eagerness and less um, haste to leave the office because actually there was less to leave it for, apart from, you know, maybe meeting friends in a pub or getting food or But in Rio, there's so much to do, both in the mornings before work. Sometimes I would often surf at 6.30 a.m. 
and have an hour surf before getting the metro um, into work. I worked in the center and I lived on the, on the beach area in the south zone. So it's a completely different lifestyle of what's possible to, to include in your day. It's beautiful. So what is your favorite or more interesting story uh, about working in Brazil? What's an interesting story? Yes. Um, I something I found really interesting was the lunch culture. So lunches can be between one and a half to two and two and a half, sometimes hours long. And it's actually a very important cultural exchange. It's, it, it matters a lot who you go to lunch with in, in terms of your colleagues. It matters where you go, who you're seen with. And it's really an exchange of information sometimes internally, like perhaps British and American um, meetings would occasionally happen on the golf course. In Brazil, there was a real lunch culture um, and, and nothing was done at speed. Everyone was, everything was taken time over. So that, that was an interesting experience. Good. And the, uh, what, is, what do, you, do you think is most interesting about the Brazilian culture, especially related to work? Um, aside from the things I've, I've mentioned already, I think um, it's, it's really the key thing that I'll come back to, I think, is this planning versus adaptability. That's probably the biggest difference uh, that I found in my experience. I should caveat that the obviously the project I was working on, the Olympic Games, is a very international project. All of our stakeholders, sponsors, the International Com Olympic Committee. It's a very international project involving many international companies. So it probably wasn't a purely Brazilian experience, but the organizing committee was, staff-wise, was over 90% Brazilian, uh, I guess. So it was an interesting integration of the cultures of, of experienced workers that had come from other countries and had done different Olympics in the past, learning how to do the Olympics in a karaoke style. Um, so that, that was really, really an interesting uh, mix. And I think it worked well. At the end of the day, it's a lot of um, work is about the human element uh, and about uh, um, human interactions. And I, th I think Brazilians and especially pe people in Rio, they're very strong on, on human communication. And you always, um, ha I always had a sense that people could express themselves well. Um, that there wasn't, if a, if a colleague was, a local colleague was happy, I knew they were happy. If they were sad, I knew they were sad. If they had a problem at home, it was shared and it was dealt with. Um, the other, I guess, key difference is hierarchy. There's a quite a strong leaning towards hierarchy and the boss is the boss. And, and it's, it's quite clearly marked whilst in my experiences in the UK when I was in my 20s and was growing through the ranks in my, in my job at the British Olympic Association, I had an American boss who really encouraged the use of initiative. He had a phrase which was, um, bring me the baby, not the labor pain. So he didn't want to know, he, he gave me a project, let me get on with it and didn't really want to know exactly how I went about achieving the results, but as, as long as the results were good, then, uh, then that was, that was uh, fine. In Brazil, I think there was a little bit more micromanagement, a little less trust in, in the junior employees to, take, to use initiative. Yeah. I get, when I see you, you, you really seem to be like a carioca. Uh, <laughs> and the, but there is anything about Brazil that you still didn't understand? <clears throat> Many things, <laughs> many things. Um, I think the, the biggest one is commitment, is, uh, is making, making and keeping commitments. So in London, inside the workplace or outside the workplace, if you make a, an agreement to meet somebody at 3 p.m. at this coffee shop, then you will be at that coffee shop at 3 p.m. unless you call them and explain clearly, you know, that you're going to be delayed or that something's happened. In Rio, there's, there's a real um, uh, 
different culture with, with, with timing. And it's not even, it's, it's sort of not even seen to be rude to just uh, not show up or show up half an hour late or an hour late. Or they have a phrase which is Toshegando, which means I'm arriving. But someone can can write to you and say, I'm arriving when in fact they haven't, that means they're just about leaving their apartment, which is, you know, half an hour away the other side of the city. So in general, I think commitment is something that has different different meanings in in my experience of working in the UK and, and working in, in, in Brazil. Yeah, and I think like in your personal life, it's okay just to understand that and like be flexible. Uh, and I see you flexible, I'm sure like even if you don't mm -hmm. understand, you can deal with that. But like when you work in Brazil, you work with a Brazilian team and the uh, uh, international team as well. So how, what did you do for deal with this uh, commitment? way uh, uh, the way brazilians do commitment like how did you how did you how were you able to meet the expectations about the uh, international team and the brazilian team yeah so my, my role was a lot working with the international media so the foreign correspondent journalists that were based in brazil i would often be there oh i was their go-to point their point of contact whenever they had queries or were following stories or wanted to make interviews with um with the olympic committee so there was often a a sort of mediating process i was kind of the man in the middle um often sort of explaining how things work in in rio and the, the flexibility and the adaptability and but also internally sort of often pushing colleagues to make sure that a deadline was met or an interview that was agreed was in fact kept. And I think it was a, a brilliant learning experience for both sides, but particularly for all of my colleagues, Brazilian colleagues that worked within the Rio 2016 com committee. I think it was a fantastic project to be part of, to learn how to interact with business people or journalists from um, from from other countries. Great. Andy, could you describe uh, the challenge of working with Brazilians or in Brazil? Well, um, aside from the, the language barriers and the cultural differences, um, I I actually found it really really enjoyable to work with Brazilians. I found There's a lot of excitement and joy and fun that is included in the workplace that perhaps isn't always the case in, in, my, in my previous experiences in the UK. Um, I think we're very concerned with formality and seriousness in the UK. And actually in Brazil, work is another thing that can be enjoyed in, in keeping with the, the lifestyle. But I think the main challenges were obviously keeping to timings, um, agreeing things with certainty. So I had to learn to live with a lot of uncertainty. So for example, we would organize a, a launch of a campaign for media. And in the UK, that would probably be defined two weeks ahead of schedule and would be put in diaries and journalists would know exactly what day and what time and where. And here in, in Rio, we would normally organize things sort of 24, 48 hours before because things could be organized that quickly and because the media would turn up because we were important enough to their news, their news outlets. Um, but it meant I had to get used to doing things at much more short notice with less preparation perhaps. And, um, and that was something that I found quite uncomfortable at first, but then treated as a, as a skill to learn as an attribute to, to, to learn to work that way as well. Yeah, so about the, the Olympics, for me, it's a grand, great example. I don't know if it is true, but by what I saw, like before the Olympics, we had the feeling that nothing was really ready. Like one week before, like it still have a lot of problems. But like when the Olympics happened, I, I really don't think there was a lot of issues, you know? I didn't see many problems when it started to happen. This is what I saw for But of course, I was not working in the Olympics. Is this true? Mm. 
we covered the problem as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you guys have a very good meter, right? <laughs> <laughs> we did have the swimming pool turn green one morning. That was a, an early 5 a.m. phone call I got from my boss. The swimming pool is turned green and we need some time to figure out why. Anyway, um, it, it is the biggest, pro um, biggest event in the world, bar none. It's, the, it's a huge, it's 11,000 athletes from over 200 countries in 35 venues. Um, it's a huge citywide operation. And so with every Olympic Games, the local media often are critical in the build-up. You have this curve where when you win the bid, everyone's excited and happy. And then it starts to get into the phase where you need to construct venues, where you need to make investment, where road systems maybe need to be updated or changed. And often there is a lot of um, problems on, on the run-in uh, that the media will highlight. But then once the games begin, the, the focus of attention really turns to the athletes and the sport and the spirit of the games. And that's the most important thing, really. What spirit does the host country create for, for the atmosphere of the games and for the athletes attending? And I think we all, anyone that's ever been to Rio or Brazil knows that one thing that there will always be will be spirit, energy, positivity, um, a, very, a very high energy, energetic feeling. And that came through really strongly. And I think so while there may have been operational imperfections compared to, say, my first Olympics was Beijing in China, which was huge, you know, timed to perfection. Every, everything was, was done with huge manpower and resources. I think they had 500,000 volunteers compared to 70,000 in Rio. And so it's, it's the spirit that counts. And I think Rio and Brazil did a wonderful job at creating a spirit that, that all the athletes and everyone attending could really get involved in and enjoy. And I have the saying of with the Christ statue, Rio welcomes you with open arms. And I think that was certainly what we found for the games. And it was something that I never had any doubt about. I knew once the games began that, that the spirit of the karaoke's would take over. Great. So how people in London see a Brazilians? Um, good question. I think Brazil is, is famous for some, some um, stereotypes, I guess, in terms of um, sun, samba and soccer, uh, or football, as we call it. Um, And, and that's probably the first image of Brazil for foreigners is probably Rio. When we think it's interesting that Sao Paulo is, is obviously the huge business capital and the, the, you know, the powerhouse, the bank of Brazil. But I think foreigners, um, when they have an image of Brazil in their heads, they probably think of the beach of football, of, of Rio's um, iconic Monuments, I think. And the, when you like when you start to work in Brazil, you see like Brazil is really like that, or just the stereotypes? Well, I did. I did find what I'd already known from my backpacking trips, which is that there is a lot of joy here. There is a lot of joy de vivre, um, um, spirit of, of of life, really, and uh, and that comes through clearly. And I think Carnival is probably the best representation of that, you know, five days of music and dancing and high en high energy. Um, so I, I did certainly find that that exists, but I also, um, it's also prevalent how capable Brazil is at delivering creativity and delivering really interesting projects with, with a lot of style, I think everything about the look and feel of the Rio 2016 games was very stylish um, with great spirit. Yeah. So, so I, f I found the image of, of Brazilians here in Rio to be quite accurate, quite fun loving, quite relaxed, quite informal. Um, and that's something that I enjoyed a lot. Great. And it, what the, what if you have known before would you, made your life or your work easier in Brazil? Well, it would have been fantastic to have had some Portuguese already in my, my locker. I, I turned up without 
any Portuguese, just a few words. I think I had one lesson in London before I left because everything happened quite fast. Um, so that would have been a huge, huge help. And then I must say there, there is a lot of bureaucracy involved in um, some of the administration involved in being a foreigner in Brazil. However, the Olympic Committee did a fantastic job of helping us with all of those elements, um, like visas, like tax registration, like finding apartments. Um, so I, I do have friends who weren't involved in the Olympic project who came here as expat workers who, who found some of the admin quite difficult. So I'd say having a local help a local fixer perhaps is is um, is important if you don't have that within the organization. I was lucky I did. Yeah, this is a challenge even for Brazilians. It's, yeah. Sure. You're right. Yeah. Um, in in your opinion, what does a CEO or executive need to know to deal better with their team or to the to the people they work with? Okay. So aside from the language. I think the key um, understandings for an exec to have is um, really about the uh, what we discussed about having flexibility and adaptability in terms of timing and in terms of planning and in terms of being willing to change those plans. And um, my experience was that I found when I came in the first few months and continued to be the strict um, rigid gringo style of management that wasn't really well received and also I think I think criticism is something that works differently in different cultures I come from a sporting background I was a, a hockey player in the English National League and for me constructive criticism was something that was very comfortable with receiving um, something I was used to I found sometimes uh, there was a sensitivity and perhaps there's more, uh, more, uh, more emotion involved in the workplace in, in Brazil. And so you had to pick and choose your timings when you would criticize someone if there was something that needed to be improved or corrected or changed. Um, so that's, that's probably one for execs and uh, CEOs to be, to be aware of. Thank you. Uh, and the, um, any advisor to understand it Brazil or Brazilians at work? Um, yeah, my advice would be to um, be open. Um, be open to the level, high level of interaction and human, human interaction and conversation and exchange. A, a lot of the most important information that was exchanged in the workplace in, in, in my experience in Rio was informally, was um, over lunches, over chats around desks, over a coffee. Um, so that, that's probably one thing I would, I would uh, propose. And also so, socializing is really important. To, to be seen to be antisocial is quite a, uh, quite a negative. And so I got involved in the five-a-side football kickabouts I got involved in playing a, an instrument in the, in the work music band, Blocco, as it was called, um, for Carnival. It's great. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we had a big Blocco by the, the 2016, by the year of the Olympics, and uh, we filled a, 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 a samba school, a samba school hall. It was an amazing event. So I think, I think the social, uh, social side, I think sometimes in London we have quite a clear definition between our work life and our social life. And I found in Rio, there's more interaction between those. Great. So we go, we're going to finish soon, but before that, I would like it you to, to explain some, some concepts in the view. Like mm -hmm. how do you describe time and work in Brazil? How do I describe time and work? Work, yes. Like if you are from London, like how, uh, how you describe it, how it works in Brazil, how time works in Brazil. Okay, so I think time as a concept in Brazil is one that is treated with a lot of fluidity 
and flexibility. Um, so I think go with the flow is my advice to um, treating time, working with timing in, in Brazil. Like how to do that uh, if you have the, to like to follow the deadlines from, from London, for example? Yeah, um, with, a, with difficulty, but uh, I think over time, over um, as relationships are built between different working cultures, I think uh, London will, will come to an understanding of how Rio works and Rio an understanding of how London works. Um, so, for example, that flexibility within the planning is something that's, that's key in, in Rio. Um, and that's something for London to take on board as well. Great. But I think dead, deadlines, you, you do need to reinforce deadlines are deadlines. And if they, they must be met, they must be met. And in the Olympic project, we had many deadlines and did successfully meet them. Um, I would say probably um, my team in particular, we worked best under pressure. So we did quite a lot of last minute delivery where one week before or one day before it looked like there's no way we're going to deliver this, but then everyone puts in extra, extra huge amounts of effort and things happen when they need to happen. They, they happen at the last minute. Yeah. Brazil is very great to work on the last minute. I found that for sure. Yeah. So, and how would you describe your Brazilian flexibility? Um, Brazilians are very flexible and adaptable in the workplace. I think I would describe it as a, um, a comfort with uncertainty. So my upbringing, I guess, and my, my time working in London was very based on um, certainty within planning, within timelines, within delivery. What I found in Rio was they're much more comfortable with having uncertainty and with having a, well, it may be on Tuesday or it may be on Wednesday. Um, we'll decide on Monday. So that's, it's just a different style and a different way of looking at things. So I think your question was about flexibility, but I think the key word for me is living with uncertainty and learning to do that and not worrying about it being, being uh, confident in knowledge that this is Rio, this is Brazil, it will happen on Tuesday or it will happen on Wednesday. Either way, it will be done. You know, um, it, will, <clears throat> it will come to fruition. That was the learning I took away. Beautiful. So what whilst, was... Whilst the in London, perhaps, if it didn't happen on Tuesday, there would be a whole, you know, investigation and problem and, and doing it on Wednesday would be a, a disaster because it was planned for Tuesday. Um, so it's, it's an interesting, different way of uh, analyzing things. It, it is the, the great thinking about work in a different culture it's because you can extract, uh, you can take what's better from both. Like planning, mm. it's great. Brazilians have to learn that. But be yes. flexible, it's very important as well. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And the, uh, what the, is the best lesson or the better lesson you learn it in Brazil? Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> Good. So thank you so much for everything. I, I really think everything you, you describe here is going to help in a lot of people. Um, do you want to say something before we finish? Just to wrap up, just to say that my four-year working experience in Brazil was probably the, uh, the best experience of my, my life in total, um, both inside and outside of the workplace because of the positive energy and sense of enjoyment and, um, and spirit for life really that exists particularly in Rio. So I would highly recommend Brazil for a life experience um, and it's totally worth um, going with the the flow of the trials and tribulations of, of working in a new culture such as Brazil too. That's all part of the deal. And um, for me, it was a wonderful experience.